The city of Liverpool has always been a little different, with its own humour, unique accent and attitude. We have a fellow went into one of those shops once in Liverpool where they sell those, uh, you know, minks and things. He says, uh, to the girl, he said, give us one of those uh, hurry coats. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir, what fur? He said, for the Jews, you <laughs> In the late 50s, Liverpool seemed to take rock and roll a bit more seriously than most places in Britain, and a new sound was born. Mersey Beat, as it had become known, became a sound that took over Britain and the world. Got every Beatle record at home, every Beatle record. Mersey Beat rarely began in 1958, as skiffle faded and rock and roll took over. Bands traded in their acoustic instruments for electric guitars and amplifiers. It could be said that as Liverpool was a thriving seaport, many locals had access to rare American records and instruments brought back from sailors. This gave Liverpool a wide variety of influences, many of which were unheard of anywhere else in the country. This growing music scene was possibly the most vital one in the country, despite being mostly ignored. Well, it was one of those times when I think everybody wanted to play guitar and everybody wanted to be a musician. And everywhere was groups, I mean, there was, there was groups everywhere. And the main, the different thing is, hardly any of these venues had alcohol. I think what made it unique was that I think the music before Maisie Beat was, was slightly insipid. You know, as much as you like Cliff Richard and Marty Wilde and some of those, they weren't, they weren't exciting, they weren't drive, they weren't giving the kind of music that hit your ears straight away. Influenced by the American rock and roll stars of the time, many young Liverpudlians picked up their instruments and formed bands all around. During Mersey Beats peak, there were at least 300 groups in the area, all playing in a wide variety of venues. Perhaps the central hub for all the activity was the Cavern Club, a former jazz venue that now hosted rock and roll. When beat music started here in 1960, and then the Beatles eventually performed here in 1961, what the bands in Liverpool were walking into was a club that was all already very well established on the, on the national circus. It was Liverpool's first permanent live music venue. Prior to that, you know, jazz and you know, then beat music was played in dance halls or social clubs, places that had other roles, other um, had been created for other purposes. But the cavern was created for the purpose of, of live music. By 1962, Liverpool was booming with bands like the Swing and Blue Jeans, Jerry and the Pacemakers, the Searchers, and of course, the Beatles. During this time, the Beatles became a national hit. Because of this, many record labels descended upon Liverpool in attempt to sign any talent they could find. Due to this Liverpool invasion, Mersey Beat dominated the charts for the next few years. However, this came to an end in 1965. With all its main talent snatched up, the local scene was plunged into darkness. I think the reason it died out was because they became an overkill in the end, and there's only so much talent in the city. And I think basically our, all our talent was sucked out of us and uh, left us with nothing else. And really it was the lack of creativity from the Mersey Beat bands that was the, the downfall really and brought that Mersey Beat period to, to an end. Liverpool bands are bound to feel pressured by the Beatles. A lot of them will deny it and a lot, a lot of them will curse the Beatles. They'll say that, you know, people expect you to be like the Beatles and it's not fair, they were years ago, we've got a new heritage. Uh, but it, it's something that you've got to acknowledge because no matter what kind of music you play, no matter how advanced you think you are, there'll, also be, there'll, there'll always be something in what the Beatles did to influence you, whether it be the harmony, whether it be the lyrics, whether it be the music, there's something there that's bound to influence you. You've got to nod in their direction somehow. Without doubt there's been the resentment from local musicians, whether Mersey Beat musicians who felt they were as good as the Beatles but didn't get the breaks, and more contemporary musicians since the 60s who believe that, you know, focusing on, on the Beatles and on that Mersey Beat period is very negative for the development of musicians and bands today. 
The main difference between today's music scene, and it is pretty thriving, it's probably uh, more thriving than, even than it was in the 60s, uh, the scene, because now you can actually come into a radio station and, and give a CD to play. I mean, years ago, it was too expensive. You couldn't go and get a, a, a one piece of vinyl done. It would have cost you a fortune. And not many radio stations play cassettes. So it was very hard to get your music played then. It's easy now. You can get a demo disc done yourself. You can do it at home, in your bedroom put on CD and taken it to the radio station. And I think the scene is thriving. And the main difference is that today's groups are doing all their own stuff. In the 60s, all we ever did basically were covers. Even the Beatles, before they made it big, all did mainly covers, but they'd slip one or two of their own numbers in each time. So the scene today is different in that way, that most of the bands write their own stuff. Although it only lasted a few short years, the Maisie Beat legacy lives on to this day. The Beatles are still one of the world's best loved artists and the Cavill Club is as popular as ever. To this day, Liverpool continues to be a musical city. In 2001, the Guinness Book of Records declared Liverpool as the capital city of music, with more number one records than any other city in the world. Liverpool has been, and always will be, a little different, with its own humour, distinctive accent, attitude and remarkable music.